Hi, we're Beth and Jake and we live full-time in our self-built Vauxhall Movano van. In this video we'll show you around Cornwall, one of our favourite places in England, but first a quick stop en route to Thatcher's Rock. made it to our first destination in Cornwall, which is Charlestown. Jake has been here before, so he's going to show me around. I've never been, I don't think. Maybe I have. <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to have a little walk around and take you with us. Charlestown is a village and port on the south coast of Cornwall. When we were there, it was calm and peaceful. As you can see, there are lots of doves here. This is because a flock of doves were released on a film set for a dramatic scene. 20 years later, these doves have thrived and are now part of the charm of Charlestown. Oh, and by the way, Charlestown has the clearest water we have both ever seen in the whole of England, and this got us really excited for the rest of our trip. This is the road that we managed to park on. Um, I reckon it gets quite busy, so arrive early in the morning, it's free. Um, we'll write the name of the road just here so you can check it out. So the second place we're visiting in Cornwall is this place, Kennel Vale Nature Reserve. Uh, we're gonna take you with us and show you whether it's worth visiting or not. It's hard to find words to describe this place. I had seen this place pop up on a few blog posts around Cornwall, so we decided to stop here on our way to the coast. After walking around for a good few hours, we got slightly lost. There are so many small paths that wind through water-filled quarries and buildings that once produced gunpowder. It had been raining a lot before we arrived, so the small waterfalls were alive with motion. Lucky it wasn't freezing cold because we got rather wet feet. We are honestly so shocked by this place. I did just have to get a soaking wet and walk for a waterfall, but this place is like... If you're in Cornwall, you've got to come here. There's just so many abandoned buildings, which we love. And just waterfalls like endless amounts of waterfalls it's just insane and the best thing is we are the only people here next up is lizard point we were recommended this place by a lovely instagram follower so we're very grateful for that the scenery here is rugged and dramatic you can park on the side of the road for free and use the footpath to reach the coast
This is St Michael's Mount. When the tide is low, you can use the granite causeway to reach the mount. It's a short walk, but make sure you check the tide times. We didn't film very much here because we were having a great time making dinner whilst watching the sunset here. So here we are, we have parked here on this big grassy field for a grand total of two pounds. You can see Jake off in the distance, and now we're gonna walk down to the beach. This is Pedden Vounder. It's one of the most impressive beaches I've ever seen. We knew that getting down to this beach wasn't going to be easy as we did our research beforehand. I was warned, but coming down to this beach was quite difficult. <laughs> It was a chilly day so the beach was quiet with only a few people kayaking and exploring the rocky caves. It was easier going up than coming down. We couldn't stop looking at the view behind us. It was breathtaking from above. One of our favourite things about Cornwall so far is the rugged land that just can't be made into farmland. Now for another beach. This one was called Perrinborth. It was spacious with lots of small rock pools to explore. And this is Booby's Beach. This beach was insane. We got here early and paid £5 to park all day. There are three beaches in this area that are just a short walk from each other, so we recommend parking up for the day and walking in between the three beaches. So currently we're just off Booby's Beach, um, up the hill. If you're facing from the road, it'll be on the right hand side because on the map we've seen there's a massive hole right here which kind of fills up with water from the bottom um, rushes through there and fills up with water the top is a better view down. Um, I think the tide is pretty far out but still there's quite a fair bit of water in there so very cool. We kept walking along the cliff. There are so many small beaches that looked impossible to get down to which is why they are untouched and pristine. The last beach that we found during our cliff top walk was a beach that Jake visited with his family when he was little. He remembered jumping off this rock into the sea when the tide was in. It's not a picture. Oh, so annoying. We're currently walking from where we parked the van, which is up a little hill um, where you can sleep for free, no one bothers you, and we're going to walk into town now and hopefully get a vegan pasty and some fudge. Our favourite pasty shop in Padstow was the Cornish Bakery. <laughs> they had this delicious cauliflower spiced pasty and it was just the best pasty we've both ever had in our lives. Padstow was food heaven for us. In the space of about an hour we managed to find vegan pasties, dairy free fudge, ice cream and just delicious chips. <laughs> <laughs> a 
short walk from Padstow, you'll find a beach. We didn't expect this beach to be so beautiful right here, but we just stumbled across it. It's the perfect place to take a picnic of all the food you might find in Padstow. So later that evening, we start to make our way towards Tintagel. There was so much mist and fog. It was so hard to drive. This is not going to be fun. We're currently in a little village called Boz Castle and we didn't know anything about it before we came here but the car park was free after five o'clock so we just decided to wander down the river and it opens out here into the sea. This place just looked like something out of a film. It looked like a place that you might see in Iceland, not in England, but I think that was partly due to the majestic sea mist that had come in. The whole town was picturesque. Our last stop in Cornwall was Tintagel. It was early in the morning when we started walking to Merlin's Cave. We parked in a nearby car park for £4, which paid for our stay all through the night until 10am, so we took the chance to explore while everyone else was sleeping, so that we could leave when our car park ticket ran out. Like the day before, it was very misty, but that just made it look even more breathtaking. The cave fills with water at high tide, but has a sandy floor and is explorable at low tide. A British poet made Merlin's cave famous by describing waves bringing the infant Arthur to shore and Merlin carrying him to safety. You don't need to buy a ticket to walk down to Merlin's cave, but you do need a ticket to go to the castle over the bridge. We took the opportunity to walk up along the cliffs for a detour back to the van. And that's it from us today. We really hope you enjoyed this video and if you haven't been, we hope this has inspired you to visit this beautiful part of the country. We post a new video every Sunday, so remember to subscribe and if you like this video, please leave us a thumbs up and a comment. Thank you for watching.